back again. It's your boy, Everyday Life, and welcome back to the channel, guys. So, today, we're gonna to be talking about Apple, and uh, they updated the MacBook Pro line in June this year, and I finally managed to get my hands on one. So, this is the MacBook Pro 2017. The version I have here is the 13-inch touch bar version in space gray, and this is the successor to the 2016 MacBook Pro, but instead of the Skylake processor that the 2016 had, this one comes with the new improved Cable Lake processor and improved internal graphics. So this is the baseline configuration that starts at around 1,750 pounds. So yeah, you're pretty much paying a premium for this bad boy. So anyway, let's take a look at the specs. Under the hood, this thing is rocking a 3.1 gigahertz dual core processor, 8 gig of RAM, 256 gigabytes of solid state drive, and an Intel Iris Plus graphics 650 card. On the exterior, you have four Thunderbolt 3 ports located this side and this side. You also have the second generation butterfly keys, the massive trackpad. Obviously, this is glass and force touch too. The touch ID, which is here, and the touch bar with this beautiful retina display. So I've been using this machine now for probably well over a month and I just want to give you guys my top five features and explain why I think this is the best laptop out there. And of course, where there's good, there's bad, I'm gonna give you guys a couple things that I can improve on for the next model. So in no particular order, I'll start with the retina display. In my opinion, this is one of the best displays you can get on a laptop right now. Why? Because it has a resolution of 2560 by 1600 at 227 pixels per inch and all these pixels support the wide colour spectrum. And of course the screen can get very bright too, precisely up to 500 nits which makes it the brightest screen on a laptop. I mean just look at this. So next up is the second generation butterfly keys. I mean, some people hate them and if I'm honest, I actually really love them because once you get used to typing on these, I mean, it's a learning curve when you switch over and start using these because of the shallow depth it has. But once you do get used to it, you just be impressed by the speed at which you can type and the tactile experience it gives you. I mean, let me just give you an example of this. Just So at number three here we have Touch ID, which is also the power button right here. So we all know how good Touch ID is on the iPhone, so I don't really need to go into too much detail about it, but it's just bringing it over to the MacBook just makes it so convenient logging in. I mean, it's secure, you can make payments quicker. It's just, in my opinion, it's just fantastic and it's, yeah, it's very good. So at number four we have the massive, massive trackpad and this is not really a conventional trackpad because it has no physical mechanism behind it. It's just pretty much when you click, the machine sends out a vibration, which is also known as haptic feedback. So when the laptop is off, you can't actually press this in as it's just solid. So you won't be able to feel anything. But this, this is a bit like the second gen butterfly keys. It really divides opinion because people say, why is it so big? You don't need a trackpad that big complaining about the palm rejection but in reality the palm rejection is brilliant so it can easily tell between your palm resting on it or a physical click so I don't know why people complain about that and in all honesty I mean having a bigger trackpad makes gestures a lot easier to do I mean you can maneuver around the screen a lot easier you can just move from point to point quicker and it's just all in all I think it's amazing so yeah this is the massive trackpad. Last but not least is the KB Lake processor, the new KB Lake processor. I mean, now this thing is a beast. Well, for me anyway, because it just delivers incredible speed when you're using it. I mean, everyday tasks, it can just do flawlessly. I mean, I've, I've not had any problems editing and I use Premiere Pro and it seems to just tackle all the tasks there just easily and quickly. I mean, you just, you just need to look at the Geekbench score to really see like the speeds this thing can deliver throughout the system. So yeah, that's number five. And now for the bad things. 
So you know, it's not all good with the MacBook Pro 2017. So yeah, these next two things are the things I think Apple can improve on for the next model. Number one being battery life. So built inside the MacBook is a 49.2 watt lithium polymer battery and Apple claim you can get up to 10 hours on a single charge. I mean, that may be true when you're doing stuff like just surfing the web and you know, streaming Netflix for a little bit. But when you add in stuff like editing videos, doing hardcore stuff, you can expect to slash that down by a couple hours. So, I mean, they have fast charging, which I guess is a good thing, but the longer it takes for me to pick up my charger and plug it in, the better. So, battery life can definitely be improved on. And number two is, so yeah, number two is the touch bar. I mean, this thing is okay, but it still has a long way to go. It just lacks functionality. I mean, in some apps, it's really good at making shortcuts clear and visible, and then in others, it just doesn't. Like, it's, the scenarios where it's also too complicated and it isn't as useful as it could be. I mean, I still have mixed feelings about it, and so does everyone. I mean, you're pretty much paying a premium for the touch bar. And to me, I don't think it's worth it. So it has a long way to go and Apple can really just improve it by just adding simple things as making it more universal to different apps and just making it a lot sharper, quicker. And of course the quality as well on it could be improved, but it's okay, it's not bad. It's okay, it's not amazing, but it's okay. So there you go guys. There were my top five features why I think this is the best laptop out there for me personally. I mean, 1,500, 1,750 pounds is very expensive and you know, some people may not be willing to pay that price, but there's alternatives out there that you can use. I mean, there's definitely more powerful laptops than this one, especially if you're into like hardcore editing and you use a lot of external hard drives, this is probably not the laptop to go for. But if you're like me, just I do casual editing, you know, I surf, I do light work and a bit of hardcore work, but not too much. This is a great option. I mean, you cannot go wrong with this. The MacBook Pro 2017 with Touch Bar.